San Antonio is a leader in scientific research, and a recent record set may lead to a change in energy production. A powerful turbine only the size of a desk. It can even provide power to a small town. What if the key to practically endless electricity lies hidden in something as mundane as the air we breathe? It sounds like science fiction, but in the heart of oil country, a quiet energy revolution is taking shape. For over six years, a dedicated team at the Southwest Research Institute, SWRI, in Texas, has been developing a revolutionary turbine powered not by steam or gas, but by supercritical carbon dioxide. Remarkably, this refrigerator-sized machine can generate enough electricity to light up thousands of homes. In oil-rich Texas, a small lab is rethinking how we power our world. And they believe this tiny turbine might one day power your home virtually for free. Traditionally, power plants boil water into steam to spin huge turbines, often the size of a bus or even an entire building and generate electricity. These old-school steam turbines are massive, thirsty for fuel, and need huge amounts of water to operate. By contrast, the new WRI turbine changes the game. It runs on carbon dioxide instead of steam, which means the equipment can be far smaller and simpler while still delivering massive power. Imagine replacing a stadium-sized generator with something closer to a small household appliance. That's what this technology promises. The result is a power system with a much smaller footprint, lower construction cost, and potentially far lower operating costs, all while producing the same energy a giant plant would. Carbon dioxide might sound like an unlikely power source, but the trick is in taking it to a supercritical state. At normal conditions, CO2 is a gas. Think the fizz in your soda or the air you exhale. But if you heat it above about 31 degrees Celsius, around body temperature, and squeeze it to very high pressure, hundreds of times the pressure in a car tire, it behaves like a dense fluid, neither quite a gas nor a liquid. In this supercritical state, CO2 can carry heat extremely efficiently. You could picture it as a fluid that flows like air, but stores heat like water. That makes supercritical CO2 a perfect working fluid for power generation. It absorbs heat well and then releases energy when it expands. In other words, this magical state lets us extract more energy from the heat added to the cycle. Why does that matter? because supercritical CO2 lets the turbine be both more efficient and much smaller than conventional systems. In lab tests, engineers have found they can replace a 60-foot steam turbine with a 3-foot supercritical CO2 turbine and still get the same power output. Even better, this new cycle can be roughly 10% more efficient at turning heat into electricity than a traditional steam plant. In plain terms, a machine about the size of a kitchen refrigerator can produce as much electricity as a giant old power plant. And in doing so, it burns significantly less fuel. This boost in efficiency may not seem huge at first, but in power generation every percentage point counts. 10% higher efficiency means 10% less fuel and 10% lower carbon emissions for the same power which translates to enormous savings at utility scale. It also means the plant can be built smaller and cheaper because the turbine, compressor, and heat exchangers all shrink dramatically when you use supercritical CO2. This isn't just theory. It's happening right now in Texas. Starting in 2016, SWRI led a team with the U.S. Department of Energy, GTI Energy, GE Vernova, and others, to build a demonstration power plant called STEP, Supercritical Transformational Electric Power, in San Antonio. They broke ground on this project in 2018 and spent six years assembling what is essentially a full-size lab for next-generation power technology. 
By late 2023, the facility was mechanically complete, and in 2024, they actually started turning the turbine. This 150 plus million, 10 megawatt pilot plant is a full-scale proof of concept. It houses compressors, heaters, and a test turbine all rigged up to run on supercritical CO2. In October 2023, they even held a ribbon-cutting ceremony, declaring the plant mechanically complete, with the turbine device itself installed. In short, the world's first working supercritical CO2 power plant is in San Antonio, and it's already producing electricity. The operation is surprisingly straightforward once you break it down. First, the CO2 is pumped up to very high pressure. You can imagine it like a giant bicycle pump on steroids. Next, heat is added. This could come from burning a small amount of fuel, like natural gas, but it could also come from concentrated sunlight, nuclear heat, or any very hot source. The result is superheated, high-pressure CO2 rushing into the turbine. As that hot CO2 expands through the turbine blades, it forces them to spin. That spinning motion drives a generator, which produces electricity just like any other power plant does. In effect, the heat energy gets converted into rotational energy and then into electric energy, all in one cycle. The key difference is that the working fluid in the loop is CO2 in its supercritical state, not water steam. After doing its work, the CO2 cools down a bit and returns to the compressor to begin the cycle again. Because this loop is closed, the same CO2 is recycled over and over. There's no CO2 being burned up or pumped into the atmosphere during normal operation. Any small leaks or maintenance purges are easily managed, but otherwise the CO2 stays contained. This continuous reuse of CO2 is one reason the system can be so clean and efficient. Think of it like a perfect circle. The CO. Two goes round and round, continuously picking up heat, powering the turbine, releasing the energy as electricity, then cooling and repeating. In many ways, it's like a more compact and advanced version of a steam power cycle, but with none of the steam's drawbacks, no boiling water, no phase changes to manage, and no need for a huge condenser and cooling water. When running at full capacity, the step plant's turbine is designed to produce 10 megawatts of power. That might not mean much on paper, but consider what it means in practical terms. 10 megawatts can supply electricity to roughly 7,000 to 10,000 typical homes. Think about that. A machine roughly the size of your living room couch or a large refrigerator powering an entire small town. Because supercritical CO2 turbines pack so much power into a tiny space, their power density is enormous. To put it another way, if this plant were turned on at night at full tilt, it could easily keep the lights on in a town of 10,000 households. Compared to a conventional generator producing the same power, this device is like replacing a city block-sized steam turbine with something you could carry in a box. Now, what about free forever? How can anything with moving parts and heat really be free? The secret is in the fuel, or lack thereof. The working fluid CO2 itself is abundant and effectively free. We exhale it, factories emit it, and it's all around us. The only thing the system needs is heat. If that heat comes from the sun, via concentrated solar technology, from the Earth's heat, geothermal, or from waste heat in an industrial plant, then essentially no fuel cost is incurred. Even when using a fuel like natural gas, the turbine's high efficiency means you burn much less gas than you would in a steam plant. In fact, experts project you'd burn roughly 10% less fuel for the same electricity. Once this machine is built, the ongoing cost to run it can be incredibly low. In other words, after the initial investment, 
the electricity it produces could feel almost free. Hence the catchy phrase, power your home for free forever. It's not magic. It's just physics and clever engineering making the most of every ounce of heat and CO2. There's another exciting advantage, speed. These CO2 turbines can ramp from cold start to full power in just a couple of minutes. In tests by GE, a prototype went from zero to full output in about two minutes, like turning on a generator at a moment's notice. In contrast, traditional coal or nuclear plants often need half an hour or more to warm up a steam turbine before it can generate significant power. That means the new turbine can respond to electricity demand almost instantly. This is huge for grids with lots of solar and wind. If a cloud suddenly covers the sun, or if the wind dies down, a supercritical CO2 plant can quickly jump in and make up the difference. It's like having a grid-scale emergency generator that fires up in seconds, rather than waiting ages. Fast ramp-up like this is becoming increasingly valuable as we add more intermittent renewable power to the grid. Because it only needs heat and a pump, this turbine can be paired with many different energy sources. It could use concentrated solar power, huge mirrors focusing sunlight to produce intense heat, to superheat the CO2. It could be driven by the exhaust heat of a gas turbine or even a small nuclear reactor. It could tap into geothermal energy by piping up steam from hot rocks underground. It even works with waste heat from industrial processes, like a steel mill or cement plant, literally turning trash heat into clean electricity. This fuel flexibility means the turbine isn't tied to coal or natural gas, it just wants heat. Engineers are so excited about the compact size and versatility that they even imagine using these turbines on ships, remote mining sites, or spacecraft, places where a giant steam plant would never fit. Anywhere high heat is available, this CO2 turbine can crank out power. There's an environmental bonus, too. The CO2 in this system is non-toxic and simply circulates in a closed loop. It doesn't get burned or create any new emissions. If the CO2 fed into the system comes from captured emissions, say from another factory or even pulled from the air, then the process actually reduces greenhouse gases. In effect, we're using a waste gas to generate power 